All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I want to talk about some of these comments here, uh, some great uh, comments and uh, thought-provoking, really. Um, first of all, let me just start here, and it's uh, Daniel Danilo Juskovic, 6121, says, Facts... It's not like it says they were silent their entire life and afraid entire life, but at that moment, yes, okay. Great comment. Uh, and then Chad Wick Doyle, Chad Wick Doyle says, your, expla your explanation is not simple at all. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus walked the earth. When during the last 2,000 years was Satan bound for 1,000 years? Revelation 20 is a clear explanation of a thousand year reign that begins after the seven year tribulation. Alright, I'm going to touch on that. Karen Ann Lopez says, Wheat and tares, the white throne judgment is coming. Behold, I come quickly. I still believe Satan has been loosed for this short season. Blessing Jay. I'm going to touch on that one too. Alright, the world... <clears throat> Okay, Chadwick Doyle says this world is so prevented is actually sexualizing children as young as four and five, teaching them how to perform sexual intercourse and that gay marriage and sexual relationships is good and okay. Once the children become doomed, the day of the Lord becomes inevitable. At that point, humanity becomes unredeemable. The Lord's mercy is his return. All right, so... To me, whenever I see somebody bring this up, it's it's just astonishing, really. How were people able to recreate or procreate, whatever? How were people able to procreate before the school system taught them how to procreate? How do animals figure it out? It's incredible. It's incredible. The idea that we need teachers to teach children how to have sex and there's something wrong that an adult should never talk to a child about sex that's wrong I mean that's terribly wrong there's something disgusting and it's immoral I don't like it but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I want to talk about these two comments right here from Chad Wick Duel and Karen N. Lopez. All right, so let me try to, because I, I go over this, I go over this a lot, and, and I'm not, I'm failing. I'm failing. There's no question about it. But I want to try to continue to make it as simple as possible to see. All right, so let's go. Uh, to Jack, uh, Chad's question here. Your explanation is not simple at all. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus walked the earth. When during the last 2,000 years was Satan bound for 1,000 years? Revelation 20 is a clear ex explanation of a 1,000 year reign that begins after the 7 year tribulation. Okay, here's the problem, Chad. Uh, Revelation 20 never makes any mention of a 1,000 year reign. And it makes it never makes a mention any mention at all of a seven year tribulation. It's not in Revelation 20. You have to be honest with yourself about that. It, until you get past that, you're never going to be able to see it. There is no 1,000 year reign in Revelation 20. There is no seven year tribulation in Revelation 20. The only reason you're saying that is because you heard another man say that. It is not written in Revelation 20 anywhere at all. And I, I can show it to you. Alright, so first of all, let's go, let's do the thousand year thing. Alright, well, let me learn how to spell that word here. Okay. Alright, so we see six, up here it says six times this word is in Revelation 20. All right, thousand years, thousand years, thousand years, thousand years, thousand years, thousand years. Okay, so we're going basically from two to seven, verses two to seven. We're going to see this thousand years. So walk through this with me. 
All right, cause I'm telling you, if you don't get this, you forget about it. You're not going to understand nothing. Verse 2, you, all right, let me read it. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Be honest with yourself. Does verse 2 say anything about a thousand year reign? Just be honest. Slow down, relax. What do you got to lose, man? Relax. Look at it. Take a deep breath if you have to. Verse 2 says nothing at all about a thousand year reign. It's not there. Alright, so what about verse 3? And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. Alright, again. There is no mention whatsoever of a thousand year reign. Alright? It's not there. It, it's just not there. you got to be honest with yourself. Okay, just be honest. I, oh, <laughs> you think you can influence the truth and change the truth? Or influence... God and change the truth of God change the Word of God you can't you you have to accept the written Word of God as truth just because other men echo thousand year reign thousand year reign thousand year reign it doesn't make it true the Word of God stands forever okay yet God forbid let God be true and every man a liar. Right? That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing one man after another, lie after lie after lie. Right? They, nobody's nobody's even regarding what the written word of God says. I'm, I'm serious about this. Now, let's keep going. Verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years now does that say anything about a thousand year reign no, it, I mean, look at it. Just slow down, slow your heart rate down, and focus on what it actually says. Just if you don't get this and forget it, man. There's something wrong with your heart. I think if you can't see this, just relax and look. And they, speaking of us. The saved, the believers in Jesus Christ. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. I don't know, I, I can't say it any more plainly than that. The written word of God says it better than I can ever say it. And it's very clear. This is not talking about Christ reigning a thousand years. This is not talking about a thousand year reign. This is talking about believers in the Lord Jesus Christ living and reigning with Him during this period of time. Do you see it yet? It's not Christ reigning a thousand years. That would be a contradiction, really, to the entire Bible. But specifically, Luke chapter 1, verse 33. 
and he shall reign over the house of Jacob. That's the body of believers. But it's the house of God. He shall reign over the house of God for a thousand years? No. No, come on, man. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Forever is not a thousand years. And his and of his kingdom there shall be no end. I, 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 you don't you read that? I don't I, and you read this? I don't know how you don't see it. Honest to God, I don't know how anybody doesn't see it unless they are just blinded and that God has a veil over their heart because they refuse to believe the written word of God. That's the only way. Why would you trust what other men say over the written word of God? The only explanation I can think of is that people don't believe the written word of God. How else can you explain it? It's very clear. They, talking about the believers, lived and reigned with, with Christ. They lived. In, it's not saying Christ reigned a thousand years at all. It's, this is not a matter of IQ. This is not an intelligence matter. You could be the dumbest dog in the kennel. And you, and you can still see it if God permits it. This is a mat. This is a heart issue. It really is. Do you believe what it says? They, the believers in Christ, live and reign with Christ. Jesus reigns forever. I just showed that to you in Luke one, verse thirty-three. And let's keep it simple. All right. The believers live and reign with Christ during this time period. Forget all the other stuff, man. That's what it says. All right. It does not say again. Does not say Christ reigns a thousand years. It doesn't say there's a thousand year reign of anything. Period. Nothing at all. It's talking about a thousand year period, and during this thousand year period, believers reign with Christ, the Savior. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Now, verse 5, you have to be honest with yourself. It, I mean, <laughs> I could almost say, well, it says thousand, it says rain, it says Christ. So you could almost... <laughs> but in verse 5, you can't deny the fact that it does not say anything at all about a thousand year rain. You're flat out lying to yourself. If you if you say that, okay. Notice the word "rain" is not there. Okay, and you notice the word "Christ" is not there in verse five. All right, verse six. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with Him a thousand years. All right, so we do have thousand, we have rain, and we have Christ. But nowhere in verse 6 does it say Christ reigns a thousand years. Nowhere in verse 6 does it say there's a thousand year reign. Never says it. All right, let me walk you through this. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. We that are saved are partakers of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, and right now we have everlasting life. Right now, right now we shall never die. Right now, all right. Right now, we will live forever. Right now, nothing can ever change that, nothing can ever take that away. Therefore, the second death has no power over us. All right? But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Right now, we are priests of God 
and of Christ right now. Right now, we are priests of God. We are a royal priesthood. You read Revelation chapter 1. He has made us kings and priests unto God right now. Right now, we are kings and priests unto God right now. I don't know how you missed that. Maybe by the time you got to Revelation 20, you forgot about Revelation 1. I don't know. But right now, we are priests of God. We that are saved, we are the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, we are called to preach the gospel to every creature. We are priests of God right now. And right now, we reign with Him. Right, we're born of the Spirit of God. We have God in us. And we are in God. And we reign with God right now. The only way for us to have everlasting life is to be born of the Spirit of God. Therefore, we, if, to be born of God, you know, if we're born of the flesh, then we are flesh. <laughs> you can't be born the first time and not be born of flesh. Also, you cannot be born the second time and not be born of the Spirit of God. It's not possible. You can't be born the first time and not be born of the flesh. You get that? It's a logical situation here. So awesome. You cannot be born the second time without being born of God and when you are born of God you have everlasting life God is in you and you are in God it's simple and therefore if God reigns then so also do we reign with him he is in us and we in him all right, so we are priests of God and of Christ and reign with him during this period of time. Pretty simple, really. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay, so here, uh, just be honest with yourself just for one second. For one second. Be honest with yourself. In verse 7, it says nothing at all about... Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years says nothing at all about anybody, anything, any idea at all. There's no thousand year reign period in Revelation 7, 20 verse 7. It's not there. No, there's no Christ reigns a thousand years. There's no thousand year reign. Nothing. The word Christ is not there, and the word reign is not there in verse 7. So be honest with yourself and just say, hey, you know what? That's not there. There's no thousand year reign in Revelation 20, verse 7. It's not there. It simply does not exist. All right, and this, that covers it right there. <laughs> if you can get past 4 and 6 and realize, hey, it's not Christ reigning a thousand years, it doesn't contradict. Luke chapter 1 verse 33 it doesn't say anybody's reigning a thousand years it makes no mention of a thousand year reign period ne neither four or six it's talking about believers reigning with shall reign with reigned with reign with reigned with reign with it's not Jesus reigning a thousand years you're only believing that because you're believing what other men say and you're disregarding the written word of God. It's incredible. Why would you do that? Don't you care about the truth at all? I think you watch too many political talk shows, man. You think you can influence God? And get God to change his mind? And get God to change his written word? It ain't happening, Jack. It ain't going to happen. Alright, so... Again, 
there is no thousand year reign and the, and again did you notice here there's no seven year tribulation I can't show you I can't point to anything at all and say hey look it's not there look seven year tribulation it's not there look I can't point to it because it's just not there well, why are you saying seven year rent seven year tribulation well that's what Reverend Schmitty said and what Reverend Smitty says, well, that must be the truth. To hell with the written word of God, right? To hell with what God says. Reverend Smitty said it, so it must be true. You don't have you ever maybe questioned Reverend Smitty? Maybe Reverend Smitty is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It, what may maybe uh, challenge what Reverend Smitty says? Yeah, are, you ever thought about that? I mean, who's more important? Who's more important in your life? Is it Reverend Schmitty or is it the written word of God? What's more important to you? Are you going to go down in flames with Reverend Schmitty? Or are you going to put your trust in the written word of God? You do what you want, man. You do what you want. As for me, I'm putting it all, I'm all in. All in in the Word of God. Even if I'm the last man standing and I'm the only one. If I'm the only one, that's fine. <laughs> I'm more than okay with that. Alright. But, I, you know, all the same. I feel compelled to walk people through this. To show them the very simple written word of God right now let's go to Karen wheat and tares white throne judgment is coming that yeah well okay I know what she means the the wheat and tares is the separation of believers and unbelievers that's the judgment of God at the end of the world all right that separation is going to take place just like what we read in Matthew 10. I think it's Matthew 10. Is it Matthew 13? Somewhere in the Bible. Oh, I think it's Matthew. I don't know. Oh, oh I don't know nothing. There it is. It's Matthew 13. Okay. I was. At least it was in the Bible somewhere. Okay, so the, the wheat and the tares is a parable of the end of the world. All right, let them both grow together until the harvest. The harvest is the end of the world. All right? The end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And when he comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up in the air. We are changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, we are lifted up. We are transformed into our glorified bodies. You know, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, together, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is the harvest. This is the end of the world. This is when their separation takes place. And the tares are on the ground. We're up in the air. The barn is up in the air. The holy city of God, New Jerusalem, is up in the air. Jerusalem is above and the mother of us all. Jesus goes and prepares a place for us in heaven. And when he comes back, he will receive us to himself. So we are lifted up, we are transformed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Our enemy is at our feet. All right, you remember Genesis 3, when the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever this is the same thing this is prophesied all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation the end of the world this is talking about the very same thing 
the time of the harvest, right? When that great separation takes place. And when that separation takes place, then God is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever and ever and ever. And this is all throughout the Bible. <laughs> I have to show the same verses over and over again until somebody sees it. Psalm 110, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Talking about the same thing. Talking about the same thing we're reading in Matthew 13, the same thing we read in Genesis uh, chapter 3. Same thing we're reading in Revelation 20. Alright, consider. Consider. Acts chapter 2. For David has not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. All right, same thing. We're lifted up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet. This happens at the end of the world. It's what Matthew 13 is talking about. It's what Genesis 3 is talking about. It's what Psalm 110 is talking about. It's what Acts 2 is talking about. It's what Revelation 20 is talking about. Revelation 3. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. This is talking about the same thing at the end of the world, the great separation when we were lifted up and our enemies gathered at our feet. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. We're up in the air. They're at our feet. And God is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. This is from Genesis to Revelation. What the hell are you guys teaching? This is consistent all throughout the Bible. If you teach something contrary to that, you're there's something wrong with you. You're teaching another religion, Jack. 1 Corinthians 15. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Now all right, let's go, let's do it this way. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. When he comes, he, he goes to prepare a place for us. And when he returns, he will receive us unto himself. We're up in the, he's up in the air, and we'll be lifted up into the air. All right? Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Again, goes back to Genesis 3. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He's going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. This is all throughout the Bible. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. It's consistent all throughout the Bible. It's incredible. It's incredible. This is Genesis Genesis to Revelation. The same things being taught over and 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 over. It's the same thing. Told a thousand times. You've got no excuse, man. You've got no excuse. Alright, so let's go. Let's go. So let's go. Alright. Revelation 20. And poor Karen. Poor, poor Karen. I still believe... Satan has been loosed for this season. No, Karen. 
No. Let me try to give you this angle. And maybe you'll be able to see it from a different angle. Okay? Now, why is Satan loosed? Well, it tells us, right? When the thousand years are expired, sh Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Why? Well, it says why. And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number of, is as of the saint of the sea. And they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. Now, where's the beloved city? Where is the beloved city? If you say it's in the Middle East, there's something wrong with your heart. Why, why would you think that? You know, the beloved city is a full of a bunch of perverts? That's the beloved city. The beloved city is full of perverts and unbelievers. Oh, oh biscuit. Here, hold on. Hold on. Galatians 4. Verse 26, Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Jerusalem is where? Jerusalem is the beloved city. You didn't know that? Oh, Reverend Schmidt, he didn't tell you that? Well, why wouldn't Reverend Schmidt say that? Why wouldn't he tell you that? Why are you putting your trust in Reverend Schmidt? The Word of God says Jerusalem is above. It's not. It's not in the Middle East at all. The holy city of God is above. All right. The holy city of God is above. Think about John, chapter fourteen. In my father's house, was that over there, right around the corner from Rabbi Schmitty? Right around the corner from Schmitty's house, Rab Rabbi Schmitty? I mean, where do you think this is at, man? Where do you think the father's house is? you think it's in Rome? Yeah, well, you got big problems then. No, it's in, it's above, it's, it's above, it's above, it's above above. So in Revelation 20 when they compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city and the beloved city? Where do you think we're at? What we read here in Genesis in Psalms 110, in Acts 2 in John 14 Revelation 20, 1 Corinthians 15, Revelation 3 Where's it at? Everywhere we read it the beloved city is above. God comes down from heaven. And we are lifted up into the air. Everywhere we read. Everywhere we read. It's consistent. It's simple. It's easy to see. But when you're listening to Reverend Schmitty or, or his brother, the Rabbi Schmitty, you listen to those guys and you ignore the written word of God, you're going to fall into delusion just like the written word of God says. It's incredible. The Bible is so amazing. You're not getting away with nothing, Jack. You're not getting away with anything. You're not going to change the truth at all. Isaiah 66 verse 4 I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called none did answer when I spake they did not hear but they did evil before before mine eyes and choose and chose that in which I delighted not they did not hear they are not hearing God is speaking very plainly to us all 
and he repeats himself in various different ways. He doesn't choose cabbage twice, but he gives us another angle of the same thing. It's a panorama shot, right? It's a 360. We're getting the full spectrum of what's going to happen, and it's going to happen. And no matter how much you try to politic the thing, it's not going to change. You're not going to change the written word of God. All right. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. They compassed the camp of the saints about. What's that mean? Well, when we go to Matthew 13, we read about the wheat and the tares. What happens? We are gathered up into the barn. The wheat is gathered up in the barn. And the tares are tied into bundles to be burned. They are gathered at our feet. Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Right. And they compass the camp of the saints about the beloved city. They're at our feet. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Acts 2, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Genesis 3, it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. It's consistent all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And then what happens? Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. Fire comes down. Same thing. Same thing. Fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. Right? <laughs> it's so simple, man. How do you miss it? Hey, reverence, maybe reverence many don't know what the H-E double hockey stick he's talking about. You know, you ever considered that? Maybe he's just a liar. It could be too, right? Second Peter 3. We know that this world was destroyed by water in the days of Noah. God destroyed the world and then he set a bow in the sky as a sign that he will never flood the world with water ever again. He'll never destroy the world again by water ever again. That's his promise. But this world is reserved not for water, but for fire. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, God's not going to destroy this world by water. He's going to destroy it by fire. Alright. So, <clears throat> when we read in Genesis 3, It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He's talking about fire coming down from God out of heaven and devouring the serpent. It shall bruise thy head. And thou shalt bruise his heel. It's the same thing. Alright? It's the same thing. It's pretty simple. It really is. He, but when you listen to Reverend Schmitty and he goes all over the place and he don't stop anywhere, you don't know what the heck he's saying, uh, of course you're going to get confused. Because you're trusting in that dumb dumb instead of the written word of God. Right, so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours our enemy. Right, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. No man knows the day or the hour. In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with 
fervent heat. When this happens, you're not on the earth unless you're unsaved. When this happens, when the, what happens when the Lord comes? The Lord will come. What happens? Those of us that are saved, we are lifted up into the air, aren't we? We're not here on the ground where everything's getting burned up. We're up in the air. 1 Thessalonians 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Same thing. We read this from Genesis to Revelation over and over and over and over and over again. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up into the air. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. All say the same thing. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall send his angels to gather together the elect from one end of heaven to the other. We're going to be lifted up into the air when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. The, 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 the Lord will come. And when he comes, we're up. We're lifted up. Right? He'll come in an hour when no man knoweth. Right? He'll come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. It, the, the earth is destroyed not by water, but by fire. Alright, so just from that alone, you cannot have this thousand year period. And if you're being honest with yourself, you're hoping for a thousand year period of guilt-free sex. And that's what it's all about. That's why Reverend Schmitty is preaching it. He wants to have sex with all the women and all the children for a thousand years, guilt free. And his he wants to be in his glorified body, super you know, super you know, what it sex man, whatever. I don't know. It's all based on sex. I I guarantee it. You don't see it okay, that's fine, but you gotta first open your eyes and see what's the very plain written word of God. And then maybe you'll start to see these guys are preaching this stuff because they want to fantasize about a thousand years of sexual sick perversions. They're going to be ruling over these women and children and they're going to be telling them they got to have sex with them. That's, what the, that's their fantasy. That's why they teach this thousand year reign after the end of the world. That's, that's it. And the Bible even tells us that that is what is going to happen. And that is what is happening. But man, until you believe the word of God, you're not going to see it. Knowing this first. Wait, let's go here. Let's go here. Knowing this first. The second Peter chapter 3 still. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own dirty, filthy, stinky lust. That's what they're doing. They're scoffing the Word of God and they're getting you, to, you're buying it. Why? Why are you believing the stuff that they're teaching? You're not even questioning it, man. You haven't even questioned one thing Reverend Smitty says. Meanwhile, you didn't realize that's what he's teaching. You know, just like what we read in Isaiah 66, I will choose their delusions because they did not hear. You're not hearing the Word of God. You're listening, you're hearing Reverend Schmitty preaches fantasy of a thousand year period, perverted period, period of perversion, but you're not, you're not trusting the Word of God. You're not believing what God is saying. And therefore, you're delusional. 
God will choose your delusion. That's the delusion that all these people are under. This fantasy of a thousand years of perver perverted, dirty, stinky sex. All right. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Let's go to Jude. Same thing, man. Same thing. You didn't. You didn't know this is all over the Bible. Oh, well, what happened here? Oh, yeah. This is in Jude. In Jude also. Mockers. Mockers. In the last time. You see. Did you see that comparison here? There shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. There shall be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly, stinky, filthy lust. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on in the world today. Why are you following these men? You know, this... <laughs> This stuff is very real. The, the Word of God is going to prevail every over everything that you're seeing on TV. Guaranteed. Everything that Reverend Smitty says about this thousand year period of... what What is it exactly? I don't think he even put any... Not only did he not question Reverend Smitty... You didn't even put any thought into what he's teaching. A thousand years of what? Peace? Or then all of a sudden, fire comes down from God out of heaven and, and destroys you? You think you're on the earth? When this happens, you're on the wrong side, man. You're on the wrong side. I just don't think it, people have put any thought into it. And then, for what purpose? For a thousand years, there's been nothing but peace. There's been no sin. And then just out of the blue, God's going to kill everybody. What's the point of that? Why would God do that? For a thousand years, nobody commits a sin. A thousand years of peace. And then, boom. God kills everybody. Oh, well, to the devil, that might sound interesting, right? Are you the devil? Is that what you believe? Do you put any thought into this? All right. I <laughs> wow. That's all I can say. It's incredible. It's so simple. It, it's so logical. It's so refreshing. It's so. Uh, it brings so much peace and comfort knowing that this world's coming to an end. And yet, all these people that you want to extend. What is it exactly, man? What exactly are you fantasizing? You want to extend this world for a thousand years? Why? What? What? More death and more sex? Is that it? You can't say that there's coming a thousand years of peace and no sin, and then God is just gonna kill everybody. That's stupid. Challenge what Reverend Smitty is teaching. And start to consider, hey, maybe these are the words of God. Maybe this is all true, and Reverend Smitty is a liar. Just consider it. Why not? Why not? I, I mean, really, why not? Your fantasy more important than the truth? Now, what is more important than the truth? Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. Let us hear the. I'm sorry. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. 
Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Why not hear the conclusion of the whole matter? All right, compare what Reverend Schmitty and Rabbi Schmitty's older brother, whatever. Compare what, what they're teaching with what we're reading in the Bible. Right? Why not? Why not challenge the whole damn system? Challenge it all. When Jesus comes, the day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night. Alright? When he comes, all everything is going to be dissolved. It's all going to be burned up. So what are you what are you teaching, man? What's this fantasy? You got a thousand years after everything's been burned up? And you got a thousand years of no sin? And then fire's gonna come down. Oh what, it's gonna happen again? They're gonna be in You're gonna burn everything and then you're gonna burn everything again? What's the point of the thousand years? Well, the point is that you get to have sex with women and children for a thousand years, isn't it? I mean, if you're being honest with yourself, that's what it's all about. Okay, Reverend Schmitty, that's what that is what is deep into his heart. This fantasy of a thousand years of sexual perversion. There's no other reason. And I showed you in Second Peter three and Jude. The reason they teach us stuff, it's because of lust. There are filthy doctrines, all kinds of filthy doctrines being taught today that are based on lust. Of course, they try to hide that from you. Because they made it obvious how deceitful they are, they wouldn't be so subtle, would they? And then, of course, Revelation, or I'm sorry, Genesis 3. The serpent is more subtle than any creature that the Lord God has made. It's the subtlety that's fooling people very subtle alright so uh, you choose what you want to believe and I'm telling you this stuff here the written word of God it's gonna it's gonna play out just the way it says these aren't words of men these are words directly from God above you're going to find out. One way or the other, you're going to find out. Watch.